Sybil Lenora Collins was born on October 14, 1925, in Shreveport, Louisiana, as the fourth child to Melvin and Cora Collins. Her father was editor of the Shreveport Sun, a black-owned and operated weekly newspaper still in existence and owned by the Collins family today. Her mother was an elementary school teacher. Melvin Collins was an outspoken political activist and agent of change in the Shreveport community at the height of the racial segregation and Jim Crow legislation that would last for another 40 to 50 years in the United States. Young Sybil grew up writing articles for her father's paper that challenged the status quo of the day. Sybil and her siblings were homeschooled by their mother until school age. By the time Sybil was six years old, she had completed all of the competencies expected of a third grader. Due to her young age and advanced grade level, public schools would not accept her. At six years old, she entered parochial school in the third grade. She was later accepted into the public school system of Shreveport, where she completed grammar school and graduated from high school. By the age of 20, Sybil had received a bachelor's degree in sociology from Bishop College, a historically black college in Texas. During this time, career opportunities were very limited for African Americans in this country, and even more so limited for African American women. As such, Sybil ended up taking a job making just $1,800 a year as a clerk typist in the business department at another historically black institution, Florida A&M University, or FAMU for short, in Tallahassee, Florida. Over the next 14 years, she married James Otis Mobley, now deceased, an entrepreneur of the campus dry cleaners, once located on the perimeter of the FAMU campus. Three children were born during this period, James Jr., Janet, and Melvin. After nearly a decade as a clerk typist, Sybil was recognized and respected by supervisors and university administrators for her intelligence, potential for leadership, and professional aptitude displayed within the Department of Business. When Sybil was approached by supervisors and university administrators concerning her career trajectory, she was encouraged to take the graduate school admissions examination to no one's surprise, Sybil achieved a stellar score on the graduate school admissions examination. Her performance granted her admission into the prestigious Wharton School of Finance, the business school at the University of Pennsylvania, an Ivy League institution in Philadelphia. With three small children, Sybil was very reluctant to leave Tallahassee. It was only the strong encouragement and support of her husband, James Otis, that gave her assurance and solace in making this difficult decision. In 1961, Dr. Mobley received the Master of Business Administration, MBA, from the Wharton School. She consistently made the dean's list and was recognized for completing a five-semester course of study in two to three semesters. From Wharton, Dr. Mobley transitioned to the University of Illinois' doctoral program in pursuit of the PhD in accounting. She excelled academically at the University of Illinois just as she had done at Wharton, selling through her doctoral coursework in just a year and a half. As of 2014, Dr. Mobley still holds the record for completing the PhD in accounting in the shortest period of time in history at the University of Illinois a record that has stood for 50 years at the time of this recording, since 1964. When Dr. Mobley had been asked what inspired her to move through her doctoral program so quickly, she has often replied, I was in a hurry because I had a husband and three children waiting in Tallahassee. Dr. Mobley returned to her family in Tallahassee in 1963 and began teaching accounting at Florida A&M while writing her doctoral dissertation and studying for the CPA examination. At the point that Dr. Mobley returned to the educational arena at FAMU, business education for black Americans was primarily centered around preparing students for roles as secretaries or high school business education teachers, the only business-related positions available to blacks at that time. During an interview, Dr. Mobley once stated that, you had to be a nut to major in business in my day because there weren't any jobs for African Americans. Black youth have grown up in a society where institutions were structured to document their inferiority. These institutions which programmed their failure also taught society in a very convincing way that they were inferior. She was quoted as saying in one news article, my biggest problem 
she once said, is convincing them that the opportunity is there because it never has been before. The only way to get blacks into the American mainstream is to get them into the economic mainstream, she once said. In the 1950s, we tried in the courts, and in the 60s, we tried for social change. But in the 70s, the thrust is economic. During her summers, Dr. Mobley worked with several corporations, including IBM, Price Waterhouse, Chase Manhattan Bank, Libran Ross Brothers Inc., Ernst & Ernst, now Ernst & Young, Union Carbide, the Internal Revenue Service, etc., to determine the practical efficacy of the business curriculum she was building. She was dead set on differentiating her program by finding out exactly what companies wanted from graduates and giving it to them. In the late 1960s, Dr. Mobley created an aggressive strategy to attract high-quality students to her program. She launched a national search for outstanding black students who ranked in the top 5% nationally on the SAT exam and that had been identified by the National Merit Scholars Organization. Upon identifying the nation's top black scholars, she sent each of them a letter of invitation, sight unseen, to apply for a four-year all-expense-paid financial package. She then followed up each letter with a personal phone call. Among Mobley's early students was John Thompson, the current CEO of Virtual Instruments and chairman of Microsoft, who graduated from Florida A&M in 1971 with a bachelor's in business before earning his MBA from MIT Sloan in 1983. Hi, my name is John Thompson. I'm chairman of the board at Microsoft. Uh, I've had a wonderful career, and much of that career was grounded right here at Florida A&M, and no one was more instrumental in that than Dr. Dean Sybil Mobley or Dean Mobley. She was an incredible family member, but more importantly, a great counselor and mentor to me. I wish her the very best. None of us could have had this opportunity without her. Dr. Mobley grew the business program at Florida A&M from 200 students in 1963 to 1,100 students by 1973, when she was 47 years old. In 1974, she rebranded the school as the School of Business and Industry or SBI for short. She served as the founding and only dean of the School of Business and Industry until 2003 when she retired. The SBI 1977 freshman class included 252 students, 240, or 95%, of which had been recognized as National Achievement Scholars by the National Merit Program for their high test scores and leadership potential. Behind Mobley's success was a three-pronged attack that included the recruitment of nationally recognized black youth, aggressive scholarship offers to those students, some economically disadvantaged, and the promise of both highly paid summer internships and permanent placement into the Fortune 500 companies after graduation. Her personal reputation, no excuses attitude, and Wharton network were all instrumental in Dr. Mobley's ability to bring together the resources, funds, and contacts to deliver on her promises to these student scholars she recruited nationwide. By 1986, over 150 firms were documenting regular recruitment trips to visit Dr. Mobley's students each year. A corporate diversity executive from Texaco once said that, Many of the best and brightest black students choose predominantly black schools rather than the Ivy League schools. This makes stops like SBI a must while on the recruiting trail for top candidates. Major business periodicals had taken notice of Dr. Mobley's SBI by this time as well. A 1978 New York Times article quoted that, though the Florida A&M business curriculum covers the same areas dealt with at most such schools, the program here has one feature of particular appeal to corporations, what the school calls leadership training development, a 360-degree immersion into the soft skills and cultural modes of corporate America. The soft skills immersion, later called the professional development curriculum, was a marquee innovation of the day as most business schools only taught hard skills such as accounting and economics. Though it may sound odd today, it was all but unheard of for business schools to devote any major part of its curriculum to soft skills at that time. Dr. Mobley innovated this concept, and practically every business school that offers it today implemented it well after she had already become known for it. The New York Times later said that 
Mobley's business program was one that major American companies say the top business schools would do well to emulate. A 1981 Fortune magazine article touted that recruiters from such companies as IBM, Xerox, Continental National Bank and Trust, and Connecticut General Insurance have been tripping over one another in the hallways and hospitality suites of Tallahassee hotels as they try to sign up students at Dean Sybil Mobley's Undergraduate School of Business and Industry. A 1982 Newsweek article stated that, by any standard, any color, SBI students are superb. Dr. Mobley continued to build the SBI value proposition with several curricular and co-curricular programs. In 1988, she instituted an MBA program and launched an updated version of the school's professional development curriculum in which she immersed students in business culture from mandatory Wall Street Journal subscriptions and pop quizzes to professional public speaking classes. She often said, I've created an environment and in time my students internalize it. The professional part becomes second nature so that they can focus on the hard skills they need to learn. In 1982, Dr. Mobley created the SBI Big Board, a wall two stories high displaying corporate logos, each company having paid a minimum of $100,000 to have its logo displayed on the board with 50% matching funds from the state of Florida to build the school's endowment fund. By 1996, 70 of the Fortune 500 companies had donated to secure their place on Mobley's SBI Big Board. Another innovation from Dr. Mobley was SBI's Forum Series, where chairman and vice presidential level executives from Fortune 500 corporations would visit the school each week. They would speak to the students in the university's Lee Hall Auditorium. Students were required to dress in business attire to attend and were required to submit questions prior to the session as a grade requirement. After the session, smaller cohorts of the upperclassmen met with the executive in a close-up meeting where they had to ask additional in-depth questions relevant to the visitor's industry, company, and competitive strategy. Within SBI, students operated mock firms where every student was assigned a specific role. Freshmen began as entry-level workers and could be promoted to chairman level and senior management roles by their senior year based upon their performance. Dr. Mobley also established domestic and international summer co-op internship programs for SBI students. Internships at Chase London Bank, Ralston Purina in Barcelona, and Pfizer Japan were common and customary internships during her tenure. Mobley's high standards influenced similar initiatives across the university and country. Many attempted to emulate the much admired and celebrated SBI recruitment strategy. As a result, Florida A&M University was listed in the top five colleges and universities in the country for the recruitment of African-American National Merit and Achievement Scholars each year from 1988 to 2000. Dr. Sybil Mobley was bestowed the honorary doctorate for each year of her alma maters. Bishop College, the Wharton School of Business at the University of Pennsylvania and the University of Illinois, as well as from Babson College, Hamilton College, Washington University, and Princeton University. Dr. Mobley served as a member of the Board of Directors of Anheuser-Busch Companies Incorporated, Champion International Corporation, Sears Roebuck & Company, Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, Discover & Company, SBC Corporation, Southeastern Bell, AT&T, Permark International, and the International Association of Black Business Educators. She served on the U.S. Committee for Economic Development as a trustee, the American Accounting Association as its vice president, the American Institute of CPAs, the Florida Energy Commission, the Florida Human Relations Commission, and two U.S. Presidential Commissions on Industrial Competitiveness and Minority Business Development. She was one of President George H.W. Bush's 1,000 Points of Light, a longtime consultant to the United States Comptroller General. Additionally, Dr. Mobley served as a special consultant to the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, the State Department of Senegal, Nigeria, Zaire, and Kenya, and team member to USAID to industrialists in Cameroon, the Ivory Coast, and Liberia. Dr. Mobley also served on the team that established Africa University in Zimbabwe. 
Dr. Mobley has received numerous honors over her 58 years of distinguished service to Florida A&M University, where she received the Lifetime Achievement Award. Other honors include her induction into the Florida Women's Hall of Fame, Who's Who Among American Women, Who's Who Among Black Americans, Outstanding Educators of America, Fortune 500 Directors Choice Awards, and the John Hope Franklin Award, to name a few. Dr. Sybil C. Mobley recently celebrated her 89th birthday with family, her children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and friends at her home in Tallahassee, Florida, where she resides. The Wharton African American MBA Association and the Wharton School enthusiastically salute the life, achievements, and legacy of Dr. Sybil Collins Mobley, Wharton MBA Class of 61, and an iconic figure in American business and business education.